praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come, all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. Thank you for joining us for worship online at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. It is good that you are with us today and we pray all God's blessings upon you. Just a few announcements before we begin. This uh, coming Sunday, actually today, but as you watch this, you probably will not be able to make it, but our transition team is presenting the final mission site profile, which you and so many others have worked hard uh, on. This will go to the Synod uh, for future pastoral candidates here at St. Paul. Also, next Sunday, February 27th, is the Transfiguration of Our Lord. Also, following worship, I will lead one of two more worship classes. These will be very important as you give voice to your hopes and dreams for worship at St. Paul. So please join us for those. Also on Wednesday, March 2nd, we begin Lent with Ash Wednesday. Uh, that service will be at 6.30 p.m. with the imposition of ashes. So we hope you join us for that. Finally, as we get ever nearer to Lent, uh, there will be our new Lenten devotional booklets available. And I encourage you to pick one up. Uh, to save us uh, the expense of mailing them. Um, the name of our booklet is Jesus Keep Us Near the Cross. Uh, and I thank Kim Meadows for the cover uh, of this wonderful booklet and for the devotional pieces that you have written or created. It is a spectacular book that also has our entire Lenten schedule. So please uh, pick one up or they will be sent to you in the mail. Let us now begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine Master, that we may seek to console to understand and to love in your name for you live and reign with the father and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen
a reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass. And like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. Who shall give you your heart's desire? Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. And see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more, even if you search Out their place they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, Lord. You are the stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. 
If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much as again. But love your enemies. Do good to, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as the Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus' words, love your enemies, have preoccupied me for most of my life. These words, love your enemies, confront us again and again. And perhaps, unlike many in recent days, they confront us this morning. Will Russia invade the Ukraine? What should the United States and NATO do? Do we send in troops, bomb the smithereens out of the invading army? Or do we do nothing claiming this is none of our business? We are not the world's police. Do you have an opinion? how to love your enemies. I was so determined to make sense of Jesus' call to love our enemies as a teenager and into my early 20s that I concocted a college minor called Peace Studies when I was at Wittenberg University. I did that through the religion department. This time, as you might remember, was the time of the Vietnam War, when my fraternity brothers and so many other young people were be, being drafted. The pressing question for me was, if I were drafted, would I answer the draft board's summons? I continue to struggle with how nations and individuals should love their enemies more than 50 years later. Today, I'm not at all comfortable letting the United States tell me how I should interpret Jesus' words to love our enemies. That is the church's God job, not the nation's. The people of God must struggle with Jesus' words to us. And we must never domesticate them so that they simply fit in to our current political whims of Republican and Democratic parties. What does it mean to love your enemies? Adolf Hitler, wasn't he an enemy? Osama bin Laden, wasn't he an enemy? And now Putin at Ukraine's doorstep, isn't he 
an enemy. But before we get caught up in this global discussion of nation against nation, let's bring it closer to home. The place where we are confronted by how to love our enemies at a much more immediate level. Whenever I get all misty-eyed and sentimental about Jesus' command to love my enemies and to turn the other cheek, I try to think about those people closest to me who get on my nerves the most often, those in my family, those who live next door, those members of our church. Forget about Russia and the Ukraine for a moment or President Biden or former President Trump. How do we love our enemies who are closest to us? Do I pray for those with whom I disagree? Ponder what makes them think the way they do. Or do I immediately try to get the upper hand, take cheap shots, see if my strong opinions can bowl them over and shut them up? Or am I a bit more weak need? Do I head to the parking lot and say to a friend who I know agrees with me, can you believe what she just said? Or the minute I get home, do I call a person who I know will not take another opinion? Do I say, is he crazy? How could he ever suggest St. Paul does that? For me, the finest moments of this transition process took place in early January when we gathered here in our sanctuary on a Wednesday evening, remember how we talked about staff changes? We were all a bit nervous, weren't we? Our blood pressure was up, our jaws tight, our fists clenched. We had all, all our own opinions. I remember that night because people said what was on their hearts. Face to face, tears streaming and sentences broken with emotion. There was honesty that night. There was openness. There was a longing to love one another even those we felt wronged by. And remember how some even asked for forgiveness when they realized the things that they said were hurtful to others. As soon as that gathering was over, I thought to myself, this is a sea change. Something happened that night. I thought, this will be a fine congregation in which to serve as pastor. You dared to do the amazing and to be courageous. You dared to live around Jesus' words. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We have come a long way. With much thanks to Deacon Natalie Bloomquist. We have not always agreed with one another. And that is par for the course in any community made up of human beings. Yet we have tried to listen. We have longed to speak words of love. 
Even when we have headed to the parking lot and begun to chatter, we have done so more hesitantly. We have been more mindful of how destructive such cowardly behavior can be to this Christian community and to others. Jesus' command to love our enemies usually points an accusing finger back upon us, ourselves. St. Augustine, who was so important to the theology of Martin Luther, once said, never fight evil as it were something that arose totally outside of yourself. Never fight evil as it were something that arose totally outside of yourself. Said another way, each of us is the enemy that needs contained. Each of us is the sinner who needs to be changed for the better. Perhaps like any other command of Jesus, love your enemies makes us fall down on our knees over and over and over again. We realize how far we have fallen from Jesus' hope for us. And yet, dear friends, let us dare not despair. Such impossible commands of Jesus need not lead us to hopelessness. Rather, they should close, draw us closer to our Savior. As we try and as we struggle to figure out what our nation should do in the face of Russian aggression in the Ukraine, or what we should do when we disagree with one another, May we open our hands and receive this stunning gift from Jesus. What is impossible for mortals is possible with God. May we love our enemies. Amen. No. Oh.
promise for you and for me Though he have sinned, he has mercy and pardon Pardon for you and for me Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church throughout the world to follow the leading of your love especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the hard work of Deacon Natalie Bloomquist and the transition team. Bless our congregation council as they make the important decisions of this congregation. Grant wisdom to our call committee as they embark on the sacred task of seeking St. Paul's next pastor. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting till it is time to bloom again. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. and Guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear my prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Especially Eleanor Brandy, Logan and Addie, Sandra, Tom, John, David, Paul, Elizabeth, Michael, Mary Ann, Ursula, Luke, Mary Jane, those we now name aloud and in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for all the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. May you have a very blessed week.